we truly have the residents' interest as our first priority. Okay, so I get, is there a combination of, it sounds like, what you're trying to do? Uh, or what could possibly happen? Something like what you've done with the River West as well as Harrison, mm -hmm. or a brand new plan that, brand new from anything that anyone has ever tried? Is that what you're saying as well? It could be anything like that and anything in between. What well, we heard, all of the feedback that, that we received from all of these groups of meetings uh, was that, well, everything from, well, if it's done right, it could be a mixed income development, all the way to, well, maybe Taft shouldn't be in this current location, maybe, maybe it should be someplace else in a different location and everything in between. Gotcha. And while I do believe that you know, this, you know, will most likely be a significant decision that our PHA board has to make. But everything that we do, whatever recommendations come out of this, all has to be run by HUD and approved by the Department of Housing and Urban Development. Gotcha. So it's not just, okay, what maybe PHA or maybe what others might want to see. It also has to be something that HUD wants to see as gotcha. well. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I understand you're also over another program um, in regards to Section 8. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about the Section 8? Our Section 8 program, it's a program that offers rental subsidy uh, to assist clients with their rent, and, and those clients can live out in the community okay. uh, at a place of their choosing as long as they're not paying any more than 40% of their adjusted gross income for rent. Currently, um, we have approximately 1,600 Section 8 clients on the okay. program. And every year, um, we, we pay out to landlords um, somewhere a little over $7 million per year okay. in rental subsidies. And a lot of these are not, you know, huge complexes. A lot of these are landlords who maybe have two or three properties on the program. And uh, yes, so it is a triangle relationship between the client the PHA and the landlord. Okay. And, and I'd like to say we have some very good landlords on the program. And with the economy and some, some property that's been difficult to rent, you know, that's increased our, our landlord bank of, in the, of landlords who are willing to maybe open up to Section 8, learn more about it, maybe lease to a Section 8 client. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, recently in the news, uh, the Pure Journal Star, to be specific, uh, they were talking about your lease up project. Mm -hmm. Could you talk a little bit about that? Sure. We are we are under a a HUD mandate to lease um, a net number of forty units by the end of September thirtieth, which is the federal fiscal year. Okay. Um, across the state, um, there has been an aggressive effort. Uh, from the Department of uh, Her, uh, Housing and Urban Development in Chicago, that's what we report to. Okay. There's been an effort to, to lease up units. Um, um, in any property management company, leasing up units is rental income. Gotcha. Although, you know, although we've lost some funding, although we've downsized, we, we don't have probably nearly the resources that we had in the past, we still have our first priority is to lease units. Gotcha. So um, we've had our crew working to renovate units. Um, our public housing application waiting list is open. So anyone that is looking for a place to live, uh, they can uh, print an application from our website. They can come, come by our administrative office, which is 100 South Pr uh, Richard Pryor Place, pick up an application. Um, we, we'd love to have you if you meet the requirements. Wow. I really mm -hmm. want to thank you for taking the time and effort to come here and talk to us. Mm -hmm. A lot of great information. Hopefully we got a lot of that out. If there's anything that you want to come back and talk to us about in the future, by all means, do not hesitate. You're more than welcome. Mm -hmm. So thank you. Um, we'll be right back here at Captions. I'm your host, Lamar Anderson. We're really excited to uh, dedicate Peoria's first rain garden. It was built with volunteers. We have sponsors. We'd like to explain the benefits of native uh, vegetation and controlling our stormwater by using beautiful plants rather than using our, our pipes and sewers. Um, this is 
rain gardens are something that uh, the average homeowner can do. Look for a low spot in your yard, dig it out a little bit, till up the soil, plant some native uh, vegetation. Check out our website for that. You'll find a list of plants. We have a whole list of people who we'd like to thank. And the first of those is Illinois American Water, without which this effort would not have been possible because they uh, awarded us a grant for it. And today we have Chris Johnson, who's a senior manager with Illinois American Water. Chris? At Illinois American Water, we understand how important, um, our pres how, how precious our critical, our water is to our daily lives. And um, we work hard to protect the environment. Our efforts range from wise water use, education in schools, and technology in our operations, new technology. We have a, a new plant that's got an ultraviolet uh, filter in the water system, which really um, helps cut down on a, a lot of different things that we're, we're working through. Um, Illinois American also awards environmental grants each year, and uh, those projects benefit, benefit the watersheds uh, throughout Illinois and the Peoria area. Um, the grant applications are evaluated on the environmental impact and sustainability and innovation. Earlier this year, we, we um, granted a $6,000 grant to the city of Peoria for the demonstration rain garden that we are celebrating today. Uh, by working together, we bring awareness to the importance of stormwater runoff, management, protect the groundwater, and our precious water resource. These efforts help us to ensure water service today and for the future generations. The township applied for this grant because we thought it was extremely important considering that uh, so much of our water that goes into our sanitary sewers has to be treated before it's discharged in the Illinois River. And the more things that we can do like this and partner with all the people that were involved in the planting, with the schools and the neighborhoods, we can make an impact, a positive impact in our neighborhood. And uh, this really should be the beginning rather than the end of that process. And to that, uh, we're very much appreciative of uh, the city of Peoria, Jane, for all your help and coordination of that, and actually all the volunteers, uh, because with each one of us trying to do something, we can make a difference in our community. And to our friends at Illinois American Water, I want to personally thank you uh, for all of your efforts to make this possible. Uh, there'll be, I know, seed packets here. This is the beginning to go out, encourage your friends and family to do this likewise. It would be very helpful. I uh, also want to in introduce uh, Joe Whalen. This was a, a grant that began through the township of Peoria. Joe is our uh, supervisor, and when I raised this issue with Joe to, to go ahead and apply for this grant that we would then work through the city, uh, Joe was very supportive of this, and uh, this site was chosen because of the involvement of the school. If we can have our young people recognize the importance of this, these things can be duplicated throughout the city. And I know Joe was very supportive, of it, especially when it came to the young people being involved with that. And to that, uh, Joe Whalen. This project, and along with all kinds of other projects, has rejuvenated this area. It's hard to believe. Um, 30 years ago, it was uh, really in pretty bad shape. And to see what's been accomplished by the city, by the township, by all types of entities that have worked to uh, bring us to where we are. It's just wonderful. On behalf of the Spring Grove Neighborhood Association and the Goose Lake Neighborhood Association, I would like to thank Illinois American Water for their financial contribution and the city of Peoria for the time and effort that they expended uh, planting this rain garden in the south side of Peoria here. Being on the committee that worked on the details of the garden's location and the plant selection for the last couple of months, I found the experience to be rewarding and encouraging. Rewarding because for me, this garden represents the growth and development that is springing forth here in the first district. When you look at the garden now, you look with anticipation of the beauty and the blooms that will grow as a result of community partnerships. Encouraged as a result of seeing how much time and effort city staff put into this project. Time and effort that sometimes is unseen but invaluable, and I thank Jane and Andrea for all the, and all the city staff for what they did. Encourage that the beauty of this rain garden will be a learning tool for the students here at Valeska Hinton School. And for that, I thank District 150 for allowing us to be partially on their, on their, on their, pro, uh, on their land. I would also like to thank the businesses who contributed their time and energy and materials to, and the volunteers who came out to make this rain garden a success.
Good evening and welcome back to Captions. I'm your host Lamar Anderson and I'm actually going to be sitting here talking to uh, one of our very special guests and we're going to be talking about Tech Talk. Uh, the gentleman that I have here with me today, first and foremost, welcome to the show is Mr. Yvain Washington. Thank you for having me. Yes, um, Mr. Washington, uh, what exactly is your current position? You currently work for an agency and what's your position at that particular agency? I work for Peoria Citizens Committee for Economic Opportunity. I am the computer system specialist over here in the IT department. Okay. And uh, what exactly, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and what brought you to uh, Peoria Citizens Committee for Economic Opportunities and Peoria? Mm -hmm. Where do I start? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, basically, um, I've been in Peoria for six years. I graduated from Bradley University okay. in December of 2000. And nine, I've been at PCCEO since February of 08 as an uh, intern working in the IT department. Then I got hired on full time, and I've been here ever since. <laughs> okay, okay. Always had a love for computers, technology, yeah, that since, type of thing. You know, about eight years old. And then, you know, I ended up uh, being in the military for three years. So I did a lot of IT work there. So that, you know, gave me a little bit more passion. So when I got out of the Navy, went to junior college and I want to get my degree in computer information systems. So you're one of those people that people really need to know when their computers <laughs> are doing all the crazy stuff that computers do, is that uh, correct? I'm very tech savvy, <laughs> so basically, yeah, I'm one of those guys that you can call to fix your computer. Uh, also, are you continually trying to learn, with technology always changing, trying to learn new and different things because well, you, of t how technology changes? You have to, you have to these days. The market is so strong and yeah, you're not going to know everything, but you're going to want to keep up with it just, just in case. You just never know what's going to be out of date, what is updated, and, you know, certifications change all the time. So you basically got to keep up with the technology. So how do you get people who are, you have some people who are afraid of computers. How do you get some of those people who are afraid of computers and, and technology uh, interested in those types of things? You just got to put it in front of them. Okay. Just basically crawl for you walk. Okay. You put them in front of the computer tell them this is what this does, this is what this does, like show them, and then they'll get comfortable, I mean, on their own time, but you want people to be, you know, um, in front of the computers because that's what's taking over the world today. Yeah. So if they don't, then they're going to leave left behind, and you don't want to leave anybody behind. Exactly. So what exactly you, do you do as a uh, computer uh, service specialist uh, with PCCEO? Well, um, PCCEO has these different head starts, and each, and each head start, they have computer systems. We basically go around, we update. It's basically like help desk type stuff. Okay. We just go around, update them, make sure the maintenance on them is good, the software is up to date, stuff like that. And we get certain calls throughout the day where we have to go to the sites to make sure that they can either use the computer or whatnot. Okay. Um, and in your department, uh, you currently, uh, where is your par department currently located at? We are located, well, I'm located at the Meetech building, which is at 2605 West Cross. Okay. Um, you know, my supervisor is located here at 711 West McBean. And for those who don't know, we talked to, with, a little bit uh, to some people from Meetech, mm -hmm. but exactly what is your center, do, what do they do differently at your particular well, center? At my office, we, um, we have a computer lab that we just opened up with this digital divide grant. And basically what we did, we moved from the George Washington Carver Center and we moved into just a little bigger space. Okay. Um, we have about 20, 22 computers there, projector. Basically we're trying to have people come out and just be able to use the lab. Okay. We want people to come out and just basically come around, um, whether they're doing job searching, just want to be on the internet, email, anything of that nature, that's what the lab is for. Okay. Now, is there a cost, or can no, anybody this, use this particular lab? This is free. This is um, provided by Digital Divide. We are able to provide them with a free lab. We want people to come out and just, you know, have basic computer classes. Just like you were talking about, how do we get people in front of the computer? Mm -hmm. Well, this is one of the ways, just having them come out, seeing what the lab is all about, what we have to offer them. Like I said, we have computer classes uh, monthly. I'm there all the time, so if you just need help with your resume or just job such, I'm there. Okay. So. And you said some basic computer classes. What are some of the classes you guys we're are going to be starting with? We're doing basic, just 
fundamental first. Okay. All right. <laughs> How to that use the foundation. computer. Yes. Okay. Then we'll get into Microsoft Office, stuff like that. Social media that we're going to try to work out with Facebook and Twitter and stuff like that. Okay. So just trying to keep people updated. Okay. Now, uh, another question. Now, uh, you, we all know the digital age does change, and you were saying, mm -hmm. we were talking about that. Um, a lot of different things are happening in terms of laptops, mm -hmm. iPads. Phones are becoming larger. Some uh, phones are doing everything that a computer can do. <laughs> right. um, where do you see uh, the next computer age, and, and how are you all preparing you know, for what's coming next? I mean, well, they just dropped the iPhone 5 yesterday. Okay. <laughs> so Did you pick that up? No, not yet. Okay. But I, that is on my plate. Uh, I have okay. a brick for a phone <laughs> right now. So, yes, 199 will be going to Apple. Um, basically, they... <laughs> A phone is like a computer now. Okay. You know, eventually they're going to have a phone that has like a 3D holograph of mm. yourself, your face. Like the video in these phones is, is like outstanding now. So each, each, each phone that comes out is a different build. Okay. Like everything comes. Like I don't know what the specs are for this iPhone 5 first, but it's like when the 4S came out, they had Siri. So... Siri talks to you, okay. you know, <laughs> pretty soon it's going to be like, have you seen Iron Man? Yes. The house? <laughs> yes. That's exactly what it's going to be. <laughs> so we're just looking forward to that technology to come out. And when it does, everybody better watch out. Okay. That's a really great point. I just want to make sure that everybody, we want to make sure that everybody also knows where the location for uh, your step lab is and how can they contact you all mm -hmm. just in case they want to get in time to contact with you off of any of those classes. Yeah. How can they do that? The building is at 2605 West Cross. Um, it's right across the street from the new Harrison School. Um, to get in contact with me, just dial 309-671-3900. And, um, or you can hit me on my email at ywashington at pcceo.org. Yeah, okay. that'll be it. <laughs> <laughs> now, also, are you all going to be doing anything? Are you going to be splitting up groups that you're going to be working with, uh, elderly, youth? Because some of the needs may be a little bit different in regards to you, You're right, but this I want this to be collective okay. just because I don't want the elderly to feel like, you know, they're being left behind. Mm -hmm. If they need that private time, that's what gotcha. I'm there for. Gotcha. Like, I have no problem staying over if that's what they need to get comfortable with the machines. Like, these sh machines are brand new, internet ready, Word, Office, all that stuff is just already built in. All they have to do is just come out. And anything they need is on the system for them. I mean, we even have typing programs on it that okay. teach them how to type. So. You know, we have the stuff. We're just trying to market it. Just want people to come out and support it. Have you had your official open house yet? Uh, not yet. I mean, we are open, but we haven't had an official open house okay. yet. Okay. So the doors are open. Mm -hmm. People are more than welcome to come in. Mm -hmm. They're going to be kicking off that open house. Whenever you do, please let us know oh, we'll so we can do. get that information we'll out we'll there to, to the public. Um, we definitely want to get them out there. I want to thank you for coming here. Is there anything that we haven't touched on that you wanted to hit on? I think we touched on it. Please come out and support this center. Like, we need the numbers because we want to be able to, you know, have another lab around the community. Like, we just don't want this one. We want another one. So please come out. And, and you helped me uh, uh, come up with a different question that I had. Um, was there a particular reason you all selected that area? I mean, that area, you know, um, I guess it's one of the low points of Peoria. Okay. And it's not many people that's around there. Like, they're doing a lot of development yes. around that area. So the people that are still there, we don't know what the needs are really, gotcha. but we know computers are the way of the future. Yeah. And just going around that community, I don't think too many of them have computers in their homes. Okay. So that's where we want to touch What are some other, other areas in Peoria that you all are looking at? Um... Basically, like I said, we just moved from the Carver Center, so over in that area as well. Okay. Um, just down on this end, I believe, the south, south end, end is the where we're going to okay. be at. All right. Well, that's great. Like I said, once again, thank you for coming. You're more than welcome to come back to the show anytime. Appreciate it. I really appreciate all the information you got. Hopefully, you all will get down there to the Step Labs, um, and Mr. Yvain Washington can help you all out. Uh, Thank you for tuning in here to Captions. You can also check us out on YouTube, Facebook. Hit us up at captions at yahoo.com. Also, I'm your host, Lamar Anderson, and thank you. We'll see you later.